Hey dudes, so I picked me up a new project gun. Um, for a few years now, I've kind of always wanted these uh, Romanian Draco pistols. So I was actually able to find one. I would checked at a lot of different local gun shops and none of them have them. I know you can find them here and there online, but I'd kind of prefer to you know get them at a local gun shop. So anyway, so I made a trade. And picked up this Draco, uh, God, not even 12 hours ago, uh, just yesterday. And my intention all along for the past, I don't know, five, six years when I originally decided that I wanted one was to go ahead and SBR it. Uh, I think SBRs are sexy, they're just badass, and I kind of always wanted one. But then I started getting into, getting into training, and I had taken a couple of classes, and I realized that uh, having an NFA item and traveling state lines is kind of an epic pain in the ass so I didn't really want to I, I think I decided that I, you know I didn't really want to go down that road so along came the SIG brace for, you know for the AR pistols and then the SB47 braces and I thought it was a pretty good idea until I got to run one and back in May of last year when I took my first fighting rifle class one of the instructors Tim Morris at Tactical Response uh, just had just completed his build or assembly of his M92 PAP and he had put a SIG SB47 brace on there. So he, he since I was the only one running AK47 in the entire class he asked me since he just got it done and he just got it completed if I would break it in and run it for a while. I'm like yeah hell yeah you know I thought it looked cool and it'd be, you know, it'd be fun to run something and he had it kind of set up similar to where I had my Romanian full-size rifle set up. He had a Ultimac gas tube braille on there, except he had an aim point, had a sling, put a muzzle brake on it. Everything was set up pretty good. And then he handed the damn thing to me. And <laughs> this PAP weighed about a pound more than my full length rifle Romanian with the SB47 brace. And I, I, man, I couldn't believe. As I was running it, I only ran it for about two hours because the thing ended up like cutting up my face and it was just, I didn't like it. And then the more I looked at it, the more I ran it, I decided that those SB47 braces, while they are a pretty cool concept and they you know, do pretty much turn your pistol into a, you know, a legal kind of SBR, I think they're ugly, they're fat, they're heavy, and they put, at least me, they put my face way too close to the receiver, and the bracket, the, the plastic square bracket that goes up behind the receiver was just, just butchering my cheek. And I'm, so I decided at that point, I didn't really want to get a PAP because they're way too heavy, and for what you get, you might as well just have a full length rifle, and I knew right off the bat I didn't want to get the uh, SB-47. So, about seven, eight months ago, I come across, I think it was on uh, Prepper Kip's channel, they had a, what's called, it's KAK Industries, which actually they're headquartered out of right here in Lee Summit, Missouri, so that's pretty cool. But what they have, and a lot of guys are running them on, now they have kits for the Scorpion Evo 9mm pistol and the AR-15s, and what it is, it's like a kit you get, and it comes with a buffer tube and a so-called stabilizing brace that pretty much looks almost identical to what a, a traditional uh, factory made AR stock looks like. So what my plans are is to get a bracket, an adapter bracket from US Machine Gun and what it does is, is that your receiver slides into it and pops into it back here take off your grip and it's got a hole cut out unlike the just you know the the two blade two open bladed end of the uh, SB47 brace and what this US machine gun Draco adapter is it has a hole cut out in it for the T-nut for the AK pistol grip to go through so then you reinstall a pistol grip and it locks it in there a lot more securely because that's another that's another dig that I have against the SB47 brace is that they all come loose they start to twist and they start to slide around well with this the bracket that I plan on getting uh, it alleviates that problem with having a a tight square shaped hole for the T-net to come through you just put some Loctite on there and it stays good to go but in order to use the uh, KAK industry stabilizing brace I believe it's called the shockwave shockwave blade and they're about 95 bucks for the kit 
The US machine gun adapter that I'm going to get is an AR-15 tube adapter, so it has your circular thread pattern. I'll put it on there, and it's much longer to where I can get, you know, the, the distance, the length I want to get a perfect, you know, length of pull. So I'm going to go with that, but enough for that for the plans. Uh, I can't decide if I'm going to stick with the original wood. It is actually pretty nice. I'm, I'm kind of impressed how nice the uh, quality of the, the furniture is, the wooden handguard. It's really nice. But I think once, whenever Magpul finally puts out or starts shipping the Flat Dark Earth AKM MOE, I think I'm going to go with that handguard. They just look sick and, you know, they're a little bit, a little bit flared out, give you more real estate, and pretty much I just like the way they look. And they are comfortable. I've, I have held them. Only the ones I've seen are the ones that only come in black. But uh, this thing, I was pretty surprised at how completely straight everything was. The, uh, the sights are very straight. They're on there good. They did a really good job on the riveting here. I mean, everything is perfectly flush on the receiver. None of them are, you know, too heavily riveted, riveted to where it makes your receiver dimple. They did a really nice job on here. Um, it, from the factory, it does come with a spot welded section here where it has like a muzzle nut. So today I dremeled that down and put a uh, Manticore Arms brake on here. That'd be really, really awesome. I got one on the, uh, my Yugo AK. Let's see, what else? Along with me changing, going to the US machine gun bracket for the, for the shockwave blade stabilizing brace, I'm going to change out the, uh, pistol grip. I got a few of those laying around, ones that'll work real well. Uh, the magwell is nice and nice and tight. Not too tight, but perfect. I hardly, even with these, these uh, Bulgarian mags are kind of thin, and I have just a little bit of mag, mag wobble. Not too much play. I do have um, mainly steel mags, and they fit in there perfect. Uh, I had to adjust the safety a little bit, as with most AKs, to loosen it up a little bit so it comes out better goes up and down better and honestly from the factory another thing that I was uh, surprised with on this is how smooth the action was I mean everything for the most part is really nice nicely tight and lined up and perfectly straight there's no you know canting of the uh, rear sight block or the uh, front post everything is just you know grade A perfect but the action on this before usually whenever I get a new AK rifle I'll smooth out the action you know, tips that I picked up from watching some uh, videos from Jim Fuller from Rifle Dynamics. But honestly, this thing is pretty damn smooth, especially for a brand new unfired rifle that I just picked up, you know, 12 hours ago. So I'm actually very impressed. Uh, Sentry has definitely stepped up their game when it comes to quality control. So. I guess that's pretty much it, guys. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think if I left anything out. These Draco pistols don't come with the uh, side-mounted uh, scope optic rail, which is fine. And, you know, that just probably shed, sheds off a pound or so. I don't use it anyway. I, I may eventually go with the Ultimac gas tube rail, and put a little micro dot on there. I, I do like that. Or I might just keep it with uh, iron sights. I can't decide. But this is going to be a fun little gun. As it stands now, unloaded with the magazine in there. Well, this, this one's loaded, but as you get it from the factory, uh, it only weighs about, I'm seeing like everything I can, I can see online and through my booklet, between about five and a half pounds. Some of them are six. And the odd thing about it is that the one thing I've noticed when doing research on these little Romanian Dracos is the deviation in barrel lengths. Um, I think Tactical Lola, when she got one, she got one a few years ago. Hers, I believe, has a 10 and a half inch barrel. And on a lot of the websites, and I checked them out on Atlantic Firearms, they were saying that they come with a 12 and a quarter inch barrel. Well, I measured mine, and uh, we you know obviously took off the took off the muzzle device, and mine comes in at exactly uh, 11 inches, so 11 inch barrel, which I think is perfect. So, this is going to make a very interesting little, I guess, kind of, you know, SBR kind of project. But uh, that's primarily why I decided to not go the NFA route, so I can take this once I get the, 
you know, the bracket and the stabilizing brace on her to essentially turn this pistol into, you know, a working rifle. But I'm going to go that route because it's going to, you know, that way I can take it to many different states and run it as a rifle in some fighting rifle classes because I just don't want to deal with the headache of the, of the ATF and the NFA and, you know, with state boundaries and all those laws. So I'll be making future videos on this thing. I'm extremely excited, excited to finally pick one up and I kind of feel sorry for my other two AKs because they're probably not going to get ran that much once I, you know, once I finish this project and get all the parts that I wanted. So I just wanted to share this with you guys and uh, let you know what I guess what's what's to come. So future videos on it. So appreciate you guys watching.